We got inside this crazy lab with AI accelerators, GPUs, and crazy Xeon CPUs that a lot of folks haven't even seen before. And the craziest part is that this is a playground for Intel's customers to go try out the newest technologies in the data center. And if it seems like I was super excited to be there, I definitely was. So well, let's get to it. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and today we're gonna talk about the Intel Developer Cloud. Now the Intel Developer Cloud is designed for two primary purposes. The first one is to let new customers or potential customers go try out new technologies. And the other one is they're actually hosting production workloads in the data center. And I'll admit when I got to go tour it, I had absolutely no idea that that was even a thing at Intel and apparently it is. And so that's gonna be the topic of today. Now, before we get too far in this video, I do wanna just point out that we are gonna say that this is sponsored by Intel because a couple things, like one, I had to fly up to Oregon to go do this. And the second thing is that this required a ton of approvals to get to do. I've been asking to do this piece for, I don't even know how long, because I said like, hey, Intel, there's this developer cloud that you go to the website and then look, like, what sits behind it? Where is the developer cloud? I had no idea. And so I think it was like something like a couple months of approvals and scheduling and all that kind of stuff, finally got to go find it. And of course at STH, we do everything editorially independently, which means nobody gets to review this before it goes live other than my team. So with that, let's get to the developer cloud and then we're gonna walk through the data center and I'm just gonna show you what's there because it's super cool. So let's get to that. Okay, so how do you even get to the Intel Developer Cloud? Well, if you're like me, you probably went onto the website and uh, you know it basically says, hey, here's uh, here's the Intel Developer Cloud and there are a number of different hardware options available. Now I'm gonna point out real quick that there are other developer clouds at Intel. I think the goal is that they're all gonna eventually become one or something like that, but there is like an edge one. So if you wanna do like FPGA development or something like that, I think that's kind of sitting over there, but this is really, we're gonna look today at the data center version. And if you scroll down to the available hardware, you'll see that we have Intel Xeon the Intel Xeon Max. You'll see that we have the Intel Data Center GPU Flex Series, then the Intel Data Center GPU Max Series, and finally, we have the Intel Gaudi Accelerators. Okay, so what you can do is you can register for an account, and there is a free version. Now, the free version only gives you things like a limited number of hours and stuff like that, but you can still access things like tutorials, you can do things like you can get code samples and stuff like that, and you do get some hours to go and run on some AI you know, hardware. And like a lot of free tiers, your support is basically like community or forum support, right? And so if you wanna get started, you can literally just go in, create an account and sign up for that free tier and then start getting provisioned. And once you're in there and you're all set up and all that kind of stuff, you can just start running your workloads on AI hardware and go try different types of Intel hardware out. That's kind of awesome. Now, of course, Intel is not silly, right? They know that if they just give everybody free GPUs and stuff, that people will figure out how to do crypto mining on it and uh, you know the GPU cycles will get burnt really quickly. So of course, they limit the amount of total compute capacity you have there. Now, if you do want more, you can go and get a premium account, which is really an individual account. And that gives you things like, uh, like actually some support from Intel. You also get things like their new toolkits and you can also get access to pre-release hardware. Now, the other one that I had no idea was even a thing is that there's an enterprise version, which is definitely a paid version. But if you, let's say, can't go get NVIDIA GPUs or somebody else's GPUs, and uh, you wanna go use the Hibana Gaudi because they're just uh, you know more cost-effective in a lot of cases these days. But at the same time, you don't wanna wait to go and buy those systems and deploy them you can go use the Intel Developer Cloud. And we covered this back, I think in June, but Intel has a 4,000 plus AI accelerator cluster. I mean, this is not just small scale cluster. This is a giant scale cluster that is not at the location that we're visiting, but at the same time, uh, you know, it is available, right? And I know folks are gonna think that's wild, but just remember, if you have like $100 million to go spend on AI hardware tomorrow, you can't buy like NVIDIA H100 systems to go do that and probably not even any AI accelerator system to go do that that fast, right? So it's one of those things where there is very limited capacity and people wanna get started on projects soon. And so I think Intel has this entire service for that. But the crazy thing about Intel Developer Cloud is that it spans all the way from people that are just, you know, I just wanna try something out all the way to enterprises that not only wanna go develop their AI platforms on Intel and like, you know, Intel accelerators and what have you, but maybe they even wanna go and deploy stuff. So you can do things like you can train your model at Intel and then go deploy it and do your inferencing in your own data center or in the cloud or something like that. And that is literally designed and this developer cloud is designed to allow companies to do that. Now I know other cloud providers like AWS, Oracle, all these guys, they all have like free tiers and they usually give you some kind 
kind of like old hardware, janky hardware that you can go run on because they're like, it's free and whatever. But the Intel Developer Cloud is different because it's getting you on latest generation hardware, which is awesome and potentially even pre-release hardware. But hey guys, this is STH. It's awesome that you can go get an SSH access and go get access to all this kind of stuff, Jupyter Playbooks, all that kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, let's face it, what you really want to know is like, what is this hardware running on? Like what's sitting behind it? Is it just like some dudes that have some stuff just strung together in their office? And the answer is absolutely not. They're building this to be a production data center. So with that, it sounds like we need to get on the road. Now, Hillsboro, Oregon in the summer is a super beautiful place if you've never been. And just another little kind of fun fact is that Intel many, many years ago decided that it wasn't just gonna hire folks in the Silicon Valley, it was also gonna go and expand. And one of its big expansion sites was Hillsboro, Oregon. Now we've done things at Jones Farm on the STH YouTube channel before, and also Intel generally hosts like their data center, like their Xeon launch uh, kind of workshops and stuff up there. But aside from having things like engineers, business folks, all that kind of stuff that you would have in a giant Intel camp, um, there, there are other things up there. Like there's a fab, literally there are fabs up there. And so something that Intel will actually do is they'll start their new chips and they'll start fabbing their new chips in Oregon and then move it once they kind of get it a little bit more mature out to you know another location in the world. But about a mile down the road from one of those giant fabs, there is a data center. And this data center is one that I've actually been to before, but I was at a different part of the data center. When we did our Intel Xeon, like the Sapphire Rapids, the, the whole launch event and like the workshop for that, we actually did a data center tour and Intel showed off how they have like thousands of systems that are configured so that you can do things like, you know, check VRMs and like what happens if VRMs bad and like go do all of that kind of like fun instrumentation to go and improve reliability. But in another part of the same suite that that's in, there is also the Intel developer cloud. And by the way, we only got approval to go look at like one of the suites. There's uh, other suites in this entire thing that we didn't get approval to go look at, but the Intel developer cloud, this was just a part of the developer cloud that was being built. And when we went in there, there is a ton of stuff going on. So I wanna show you just a couple of the fun things that we saw. So one example is that we saw this awesome dev system that you have probably seen on STH before. This dev system houses a couple of different types of servers. Now this is an Intel branded server because this is before Intel uh, you know, decided that they were going to offload their server business. But this Intel branded server is something, it's a dev platform that we've seen a number of times. And a really good example of that is we saw in our Intel Xeon Max review. That was actually the system that we used for that Intel Xeon Max review. Now these things are absolutely everywhere and they have things that are you know public and current. Uh, we'll just say that they have Sapphire Rapids. They have the Intel Xeon Max series, the CPU, the Xeon CPU with HBM memory. And these systems are also designed to be able to take PCIe expansion cards. Now, these PCIe expansion cards were generally the Intel data center Max series GPUs, but they can also have things like the Flex series, so the kind of smaller ones for like VDI and encoding workloads. And rumor has it they may even have a couple of GPUs GPUs there just for competitive benchmarking. So when we talk about all of these CPUs and GPUs that they have, that's a number of them, at least takes care of like three of them or so. But on the higher end side, or especially the AI side, you don't just necessarily want a couple of PCIe cards. You may want to go and try the Habana Gaudi 2 product. And for those, it was kind of fun because there are two different types of systems that Intel is using. Now the Habana Gaudi 2 shares the same OAM platform basically as Ponte Vecchio. Now the open accelerator modules, those are things that the open compute project have pushed for years. So a lot of the big hyperscalers are very, very behind this. And then frankly, even AMD uses OAM as well. And so Intel has two different types of systems. One, they have a super micro OAM platform. And then the other one they have is from a company called WeWin. Now you may not be familiar with WeWin, but we actually did a tour at WeWin a couple of years ago. And they're the company that makes a lot of servers for companies like Facebook and Microsoft. So if you're running Microsoft, Microsoft Azure, or maybe you're running something on Facebook, there's a good chance that you're running something through a WeWin server. Now, I just want to point out real quick that number one, uh, Intel is selling so many Habana Gaudi 2s right now that they are, uh, you know, supply challenged, I think, as well. And then the other side to it is that even when they get the GPUs or the AI accelerators, and then they go put them into these AI platforms, like they literally have to get them online like super fast because I was told that even there's like a VP that will call up and be like, hey, why have you not gotten that system online? Because this needs to get online immediately so customers can go use it. Now, since this part of the dev cloud was just being built out, 
And uh, because I was there, Intel actually let me go and pull one of the new systems that hadn't joined the production cluster yet and actually go pull the system out. Now, of course, for safety purposes, and as fun as it might be, you're not allowed to ride the server lifts because that's not allowed. Now, these giant AI systems can easily use well north of five kilowatts each. And so just because of that, you need a lot of rack space and a lot of power. So when Intel went and said, hey, we're gonna go from like CPUs to doing these AI accelerators and giant GPU systems, one of the things that they did was they had to go get more power and more cooling to that part of the data center. Now, one of the fun things that Intel is not gonna talk about, but I'm gonna show you, is that Intel actually had a whole other area already set up and with these like custom racks ready to go do some other kind of dev cloud thing that we won't talk about. But that whole idea was like scrapped basically because there's so much demand for the Habana Gaudi 2s. So all of this was getting ready to be deployed. And then they said, hey, we actually need to change our racks, our power, our cooling, all that kind of stuff to go put in more AI accelerators. Now, just to kind of give you an idea, when I was at this location, there were about 20 or so Gaudi 2 systems, which gives you about 160 accelerators. Now that doesn't include things like any of the Ponte Vecchio OEMs. It doesn't include the Ponte Vecchio PCIe cards, which are the other GPUs. And then also it doesn't include all the CPU based nodes there. But something that's really important with the dev cloud is not just the fact that there's this hardware and it's just kind of sitting there, right? Because the hardware, frankly, is not really useful if you just go and put like a, you know, AI accelerator system into a data center. Like that's not useful to anyone because what you really need around it is you need the ability to use it. So Intel has things like Kubernetes and they have the ability to go deploy actual production workloads on this. And of course, if you're gonna deploy workloads and you wanna train AI models and all that kind of stuff, you need storage. So there's this nice storage cluster. Now, a fun story that I heard at Intel Innovation 2023 from uh, one of the folks responsible for this is that when this was originally set up, the idea was like during the major switch shortage. And so for networking, the original version of this only had one gigabit ethernet. But today that is not the case by any means. Instead, everything here that we saw was running on 100 gig ethernet that was you know really kind of like the data plane stuff and then there were other nodes in the intel dev cloud that are being run at 400 gigabit ethernet and that's especially relevant when you do look at the gaudi 2 accelerators because they use 100 gigabit ethernet directly from the ai accelerators to go and do their kind of like scale out right so they don't use just like an nvlink or something like that just in the chassis you're using like special nvlink switches it's and it's not infiniband it's literally ethernet that's coming out of the ai accelerator and so Intel was only 20 of those systems in, but they of course were planning for a lot more. And so there is a ton of fiber that's running around this place and they're installing more every day. And a far cry from the early days when they were running like, hey, let's go run one gig Ethernet because we can't get any other switches. They have things like, you know, they have like firewalls and stuff like that that are installed in the dev cloud because you of course need like VPN endpoints and firewalls and all that kind of stuff just to manage your infrastructure. Now, something just to note also, and something else that's just kind of fun is that there were just pallets of servers that were being installed. So the Intel team actually had their folks stand down while I was there filming for a couple hours. The second that the cameras were down and I was walking out, they were like ready to get back in to go and start installing stuff just because they were really building out this location. Now, when we talk about locations, that's another really important point. So Intel not only has the ability because they're in that data center to go hook into things like, you know, their newest products and stuff like that and bring those in because it's all just one Intel facility or it's not run by Intel, but uh, it's pretty much all Intel, I think in there. But things like AI and running production workloads means that you can't just run them out of Oregon anymore. You need to go have things, at least on the East Coast of the US, probably somewhere central. And then you also need things in different locations. And a really good example of that is like data privacy and like where you can move data. So Intel, of course, has the Intel Dev Cloud in Europe, and I think they're expanding that as well. And they're working on other locations too. So hold on, like, let's take stock here. When I originally said, hey, Intel, I wanna go do this, I thought that the Intel Dev Cloud was something that like, you know, you sign up for an account, you get a couple hours on a machine and then it's like taken down, it's probably run out of some servers that are like in tower servers sitting in somebody's cube or something like that. And that is not it at all. Instead, it's running out of multiple data centers. It's built on things like 100 and 400 gigabit ethernet. There's a whole giant amount of hardware in there, including the standard Xeons, there's Xeon Max, there's different different GPUs. And then there's also the AI accelerators. 
And Intel isn't just doing this out of Oregon, they're doing it at different locations in the US, they're doing it abroad, and they have things there, like they have the ability to do orchestration with Kubernetes, and so you can actually go run containers and you can bring them to the developer cloud, you can do your training, and then you can go migrate those things to your own data center or the public cloud or something like that. And also, I had no idea when I started this that there was even a paid option, whether for individuals, or there was an option that you can just say like, hey, uh, you know, we don't have time to go and start an AI cluster, we need to go and get work in right away so intel can we just rent out your resources and can you manage the infrastructure for us i had no idea that that was even a thing and if i didn't know that i bet you a lot of folks out there had no idea that that was the case and so if you're watching this video and you're a developer and you're like hey i wonder what this whole intel dev cloud thing is all about well this is it there are options scaling from just kind of starting playing on hardware all the way to paid options to go run production workloads. And the other side of it is just the scale, right? This is not just a couple of machines where you get a couple of hours scheduled whenever. Instead, this is something that if you want like thousands of AI accelerators, Intel will go build that and then they'll go run it for you. I mean, that's just absolutely crazy. Now, Intel is, of course, putting a lot of focus behind this, and I think that's why we eventually got approvals to go do this. But I just want to say thank you to the Intel team that helped out and like actually got me into this thing and went with me around. That was really cool to get to see. There were, of course, a lot of things that we can't show you, but of course, this data center is giant, and this was just one of the suites in this data center and one of the data centers in the area. And it's also just one of the parts of the dev cloud throughout the world. And as much as I like to show you guys things here in the studio, I also just love getting getting out and showing you guys some of the like big infrastructure that never gets shown otherwise. And guys, I hope you liked this video. And if you did, well, why don't you share it with some of your friends and colleagues? Also give it a like, click subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.